Hey, what's up guys? I finally got my e-bike today. It's only been a, about a six week wait and it's from a company called Electric. This is an electric bicycle. Today I'm gonna do an unboxing real quick, just show you guys what it comes with and give you guys a quick look at what it is. <laughs> so this thing is supposed to already be put together. Pretty much all you gotta do is unfold it and take off the packaging. So we're gonna go ahead and see. Here's the free uh, paneer bags that I got by putting in the Kev Central code. All right, so there it is there. We're gonna cut these zip ties and go ahead and start taking the packaging off. Can I? Can you throw all that stuff in the big box? I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to do. Me too. What is it? What is that letter? Oh, that's from China. Yeah. <laughs> I'll keep it. I like Chinese letters. <laughs> Are they China letters or Chinese letters? Chinese. What's different from China and Chinese? Alright guys, so there it is. I got it unboxed. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, there is some damage here where it goes together. It's banged up pretty good. So I'm going to have to go ahead and send Electric an email about that. Uh, it actually looks like the frame might be bent right there where it goes together. Yeah, it's definitely bent down a little bit right there. So I have to send Electric an uh, email about that. The derailleur looks pretty good. Doesn't seem like it's bending too far. I've seen a lot of videos where the derailleur or the guard here was bent way in. It looks pretty decent. It has the flat black fenders on it. I know some of the earlier models came uh, with a glossy fender. I'll show you guys that damage right there. All right, so here's the damage here on the frame where it goes together. You can see how it's bent down a little bit right here where it comes together and it's actually hitting the frame here when it closes because that's bent down. It must have got hit pretty hard in shipping there. I'm going to have to contact Electric about that and we'll see what they do about that. Alright guys, another thing I noticed, it was missing this little screw here in the tail light on the back. It must have came out in shipping, but I was able to find the screw in the box. It looks like it just threads right into the plastic and the tail light. So I'm hoping that I can put that back in there and that, that stay on there. So one other thing, since that was missing the screw, it got me looking back here to see if anything was damaged. And you could tell that this back rack is way off center with this center fender. That back rack is, is bent way over. You can see how this right here is bulged out a little bit right here. And on this side, it's kind of bowed in right here. So I'm gonna to try to bend it back over and straighten up a little bit, but yeah, I don't know. They might have to send me a new rack depending on uh, how straight I can get this one on there. And then you can see the paint's off a little bit here on the corner as well. So we might have to see how good the uh, customer service is. Another thing I noticed is that the bracket that the bike sits on when it's folded up is really bent to the left hand side. As you can see here in my pictures, the one side I believe should be at least straight and I'm pretty sure the other side should have a slight bend to it, but I'm, I think one side should be at least straight. So if you guys have these bikes and uh, yours is bent or if this is normal, please let me know in the comments below, but I'm pretty sure that this is not normal. One thing I noticed when you get it, these tires hardly have any air in them. They're only aired up to about five and a half pounds of pressure here on my digital gauge. I'm gonna go ahead and put about 20 pounds each in them. Let's see, the rating on here is 30 PSI, but I'm gonna keep it around 20. That way it gives it a little bit of cushion still. I'll put a link in the description below for the gauge on Amazon, and I'll also link a video I did on a review on this gauge if you guys are interested. All right guys, 20 in that one. And if you need one of these uh, gauges, you can actually, you don't have to, use it with the air compressor you could just measure the 
pressure in your tire with this and then you have an inflator as well this thing's cheap but it's a it's a great one i'll put a link below uh, if you guys are interested in if you guys don't have a good tire gauge all right so now i'm going to pedal through the yard this is the first time i'm trying this bike out i'm going to leave it off of pas and just leave the motor completely off going to try to pedal to see how hard it is pedaling up this small grassy hill and then i'm going to kick the pas into level one and see how much easier it makes now, now i'm going to stay in first gear here that's the lowest gear to make it the easiest to pedal so let's go ahead and try this out All right, so, so that was with the motor completely off. Now I'm gonna do PAS1. Definitely way easier, way easier. Let's go into five and try that. Way, way, way easier. Now let's try throttle only in PAS5. I know it made it, but I would definitely want to assist it with pedaling because it was drawing 19 amps of current that time in PAS5 with just throttle. I'm going to see how much current it draws with me pedaling it in PAS5. Actually, it was drawing 20 amps that time, but I was going way faster. So yeah, man, this thing is definitely awesome. I definitely recommend it. I'm gonna have to contact Electric about them, about this thing and bend here and the rack being bent. Stay tuned for some other videos. I'm gonna be doing a few uh, range tests with this. I'm gonna be adjusting the settings, going through those, showing you guys what you can and can't adjust. Um, if I have to adjust the brakes or the derailleur, like a lot of people have to do, I'll go ahead and do videos on them. So if you want to see them, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss them. And I'll see you guys on the next one.